Sight becomes specific once it is absent. A critical distance must be engaged between the subject and the sight. That distance is measured by the length you take to disappear. Efface your body from the sight, and the only way the sight will continue to survive is through your projection. At the risk of you being forgotten, it is crucial for you to constantly exercise the memory of the sight until it becomes concrete in the mind. Before, the world was open like a map. The difference between two cities is a dot. Countries are drawn with arbitrary lines. Borders open themselves up at each request. The fluidity of motion facilitated by capital and modern disaffection. Now there is a mark that is so deep it burns into the map. It takes on proportions around which I must create a contour Deviation, erasure, crossover. If highways were connected in stretches of continuous lines, Oedipus might have avoided running headlong into killing his father. That simply places one should not go. All ensuing journeys are performed as physical avoidance of those sites. When did this haunting begin? Was it when records start appearing for Los Desperacidos in Argentina? I like to think of them still living in the flesh, cast off somewhere by the military planes. Since they have disappeared from the public eye, they became absences. But were they ever present in the public eye before their disappearance? Conjointly, them disappearing have made them appear. Performed various acts of disappearances before. The disappearance in one's own domestic space is the most involving and tiresome. Is there anywhere else to hide? Even a closed door signals a presence, albeit one that wishes not to be disturbed. Start to measure your body and its weight with the measurements of the furniture. Maybe you could possibly fit underneath the table, but its dainty legs will not obscure the mass of your physique.
white walls are there to expose you. You, who do not belong here. Disappearing on social media, while on social media, is not possible. Even if you stop posting, you may stumble upon an encounter you are avoiding. Its appearance, on, its appearance on the screen can still shock you, even if you're protected by physical distance. Only when you are missed can you truly be absent. Only after someone pronounces your name for the last time, would you truly disappear. A story about a person becoming a place, in Prohedrin Metro, that his defunct lover would never truly disappear. Upon his passing, the emperor erected a city in his name and created a cult of worship. Antinopolis was a rich city, surrounded by extreme eternal poverty. The emperor lavished it with temples, trample arches, and marble colonnades laid out in a great work. Hundreds of statues of the new god, Antinous, lined the main avenue. Did the emperor measure the streets to the scale of his lover? Could he have calculated the emperor with which his lover's name was sung? and his oracle read for the next 500 years. Cycles of representation were maintained. The constant reprobation of its working citizens and not to mention slaves suspended the wealth and splendor of the inner city in an entropic state. Antinous games were held in his commemoration. The champion of these games receives a crown of pink flower, the Antinous flower, and also citizenship to Antinopolis and a lifetime stipend. Theatrical representations and the flourishing of poetry what took place in commemoration to the miraculous flooding that happened after his death. A young boy of 19 was selected and worshipped as the carnal and spiritual habitation of Antinous the God. Once the city was erected, the emperor rarely paid a visit. Either, even though he was successful in giving back thousands of lives in return for one, he found the expressions grotesque and the love for food and wine, an expression of gluttony rather than aesthetic appreciation. The pronunciation of his lover's name was accented with originalism that made the last two vows longer than proper. This effeminate affects the emperor writes in his memoir are sad caricatures of the natural grace of Antinous. He hates how the citizens of Antinopolis makes his smile crisp, his wave above the shearing crowd of the amphitheater stick. He only sought to recognize in its streets and in its faces, the complete features of his lover.
He knows now. He knows too much. Everything that came to the passing of his lover was simply an act of recognition. When you know, everything becomes a quest. Although he built a city for his lover to belong to, he himself is a road. Via Adriani connects the city to the Red Sea, from where ships came over the way from India and China. Italo Calvino's resonant words. It was to slough off a burden of nostalgia you went so far away. The once ideal city ceases to be a place where you can return to. The emperor's incessant, incessant journeys are fueled by the desire for home. Ours is a century of enforced travel and disappearances, a century of people helplessly seeing others who are close to them disappear over the horizon. How many times have I said goodbye to my father? How many times have he appeared in a different space, dreaming the same dream? His effective form of disappearance is to take flight, into the powered aircraft, switch off your phone, and appear in a different time and space. I was surprised to hear once that he was about to enter the Sahara and would not be able to answer my call. With special discounted flights and immediate offers, you find yourself in places you should not go, meet people you should not meet. The proliferation of these places makes you forget that one place where you cannot go. Transit hubs are full of these, people seeking their own destinations, their own Antinopolis.
But there is a path. It makes us go around the world for, to regain the second innocence. There are poets who set out on this path. I call poet any writing being who sets out on this path in order to regain what I call the second innocence. The one that comes after knowing the one that no longer knows, the one that knows how not to know. Absence takes more space than presence.